When I first got it, trying to solve an issue with Wi-Fi, it just would not connect no matter how many times I tried. Um, I had to go to, I think, three different sections of the phone to change settings, and I realized that some power users, especially in the office, who need um, you know, a wide variety of options for their Wi-Fi networks, um, probably couldn't live without all of these extra settings. But I think, you know, by default, most of them should be turned off. Uh, I'm not sure who, who Windows is uh, marketing to. Their Outlook Sync, um, Exchange Support, all of this I realize is very important to business users. Um, but just the way it's laid out, it's unfamiliar to me. Again, I'm not a fan of Windows Mobile, so a lot of that is just being used to it. You know, um, It feels unintuitive to me, but again, that's, that's a lot of preference there. For me, Android uh, makes everything as simple and intuitive as possible, and I know not everybody feels that way. But the settings sit right where I think they're going to, and I'm not presented with um, settings so advanced that they get in the way of me doing simple things, although I can dig deeper and change more advanced settings. That's just my personal overall impression of the two operating systems and the main reason I find Windows Mobile unappealing. I also think that once you get underneath the HTC Sense skin, Windows Mobile is um, very unattractive. Android needs some work, but uh, with 2.1, I see some advances already, and I think uh, it's it's on its way to being one of the uh, sexiest operating systems, if it's not already uh, near the top there, for any mobile device. And I'm really excited to see the next version of uh, Sense on Android. I think that's just going to be amazing. Now, one area where the HD2 has it all over the Nexus is with this gorgeous Sense keyboard. Uh, if you've never used HTC's Sense keyboard, you are truly missing out. It's my favorite virtual keyboard available on any phone. It's amazing. It's, it's beautiful. It's comfortable. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about it. I love it. The Nexus One, because it does not have the Sense interface, does not come with this keyboard. However, I am not running the default keyboard here. I'm running a replacement called Smart Keyboard, which employs multi-touch. Um, in a very perceivable way. If I hold down A and press L, it's actually did a long press there, but you can see while I was still pressing one button, the other one still registered. Now, I've never been a huge fan of the stock Android keyboard. This is what you'll find when you first purchase the Nexus One, but it's a lot easier to use on the Nexus than on any other Android that I, I've used before. Uh, maybe it's just because of the, the screen. There's more real estate, better resolution. Um, the phone is really comfortable to hold in your hand, and I think typing on it is fairly easy, though I do make mistakes. Uh, this is the first time I've used the default Android keyboard where I felt like, you know what, I can live with this. I'm not going to say I never get frustrated with it, but it's just now kind of coming into its own as a, as a usable alternative to a hardware keyboard. On the other hand, the Sense keyboard by HTC is uh, an object of desire for many, many Android users, and we are known for using um, pirated version on our uh, earlier Androids. There's not one available yet for the higher screen resolution of the Nexus One. When it is, I'm sure hackers will take advantage of it because it's just that good. A couple of other Sense goodies I should probably preview here are the favorite contacts on the home screen that you can get to very rapidly there just by pushing up the clock. Um, you can preview your text messages before opening the app. Same goes for email. As you can see, you've already got the uh, pinch and zoom feature here. If you've used Opera for Windows Mobile before, you have a good idea of how this functions. You know, a lot of this really is personal taste. Uh, one thing that's cool about the HD2 is it comes with an FM radio. Windows Media Player for mobile is pretty slick looking, I have to admit. And when you compare this to uh, the Android default media app, there really is no question which one looks more attractive. However, um, Sense does make a difference in that. And um, although this is just the Windows Media Player, there is a widget for controlling your media on, on Android, which is pretty handy. I think it's nice looking.
Now you do have a screen for controlling your music here on uh, the HD2 and it's the sense interface so if there were multiple uh, albums in there, multiple songs, you could drag through them. So in that respect it's similar how you manage which media you're, you're viewing and how you control it. But um, yeah, I have to say that the uh, the media program on the HD2 is much more attractive than what you'll find on the Nexus One. I'm going to have to move pretty quickly through some of this because I don't want this to be a 10 part video. But um, one thing I've noticed about the HD2 is notifications are uh, n nowhere near as convenient and friendly and functional as they are on the Nexus One. Again, personal taste. I'm sure Windows Media um, loyalists will say, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. My personal preference is I want to see them popping up in my notification bar and remaining there for me to tap on one one notification at a time. Now I'm also using a home replacement here which is you know again one of the the benefits of Android is it's extremely customizable. You can customize it to the point that it's using a, a different home replacement so it behaves completely differently than it did when you purchased it. But I'll go back to the default home here. It's going to take a second for it to load because it hasn't loaded since I turned on the phone. Just so you can see the standard notification bar across the top. But it's got, uh, you know, beautiful widgets available. Lots of eye candy for users who in, are into that, and I have to admit I am. Here you can navigate the home screens via cards, somewhat like the Palm Pre, other webOS phones. And of course what drives a lot of people crazy is the animated interactive wallpaper which to me, you know, it's gravy, it's fun to play around with, it's good for showing off the phone. Um, I'm sure that the de developers of applications will find ways to integrate wallpaper functionality with their apps because there is an API. So for instance, you could have a very cool um, me email notification that does some, some kind of animation in the background. You tap it and it opens up Gmail. That is possible. But uh, right now it's just, uh, you know, pretty stuff like this, but it does uh, turn people on. So although I've taken a rather quick look at both of these phones, I hope it's uh, given you a little incentive to uh, either research one further or rule one out. Uh, again, a lot of this is personal preference, so you've got to look into it for yourself, but uh, hopefully I've provided a, a little bit of assistance there. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. Take care.